Ellie Nicole, while she does it all, is an empire statement who shows up in the media as a multidimensional brand expression. She's had the privilege of being cross-trained in more than 50 areas and combined over 20 years of her personal, professional, educational, and spiritual experience to create more than 400 online platforms for a variety of niches. She has pioneered new industries, became the chief cornerstone content creator for several niches, and published over 230 works on Amazon. We will leave all the details in the comments um, section, and you can learn more about her on LinkedIn or if you go to wowshedoesitall.com. So Alicia, Rahila, welcome. I'm really excited to have you both here in this podcast. How are you today? Thank you, Thank you Andrada, for um, you know, giving me this opportunity again to co-host this podcast. And very warm greetings to you, Empress Ali Nicole. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be here with both of you. And I'm extremely excited about what can unfold for us to add value to others today. For sure, it will be some magical conversation, at least. That's how mm -hmm. I feel. And by knowing both of you and having spoken to you uh, both before, it's going to be like, a, like an informational bomb, if I can say. <laughs> <laughs> and not just yeah, and rather, but also vibrational. Yeah. Yes, yeah, might yes. I add to that and say yes to Anrada and yes to Empress Ali Nicole, you are the bomb. <laughs> oh, thank you. And the feeling is doubly mutual to both of you. Please oh, know. Man. Thank you. <laughs> I'm extremely excited. I mean, this is a conversation and a dialogue that is seems to be long overdue, but yet it's in divine timing, I really believe that the timing is perfect for us to come together collectively, uh, you know, to share because we're in such unique times, but times that are really unfolding the way that they should be as we all are waking up more to who we are and this new expansion in humanity. I so love the fact that you started exactly with that because the the three of the three of us are totally on the same um on the same page in regards to this and mm -hmm. um rakila before i ask ellen call the first question would you like to add something yes i just love what ellen nicole just said um you know born from love is all about shifting global consciousness and i can just feel her energy you know, the fluid, like fluidity of water mm. and uh, just, just in your vibration is so amazing. Uh, you know, it's such, it's such an honor and privilege. We've been looking forward the entire day to, to this hour of the evening. And I somehow, guess. you know, it's dynamite. And um, I think it's such a beautiful place to kick off in terms of what happened before the lockdown, what happened during and how are we emerging or evolving uh, coming out of it? Uh, for most people, you know, the norm has been different before. And however, for some of us, we managing to navigate, we embracing um, whatever showing up because somehow we are so in tune with that energy that we can sail through it. So Ali Nicole, for you, um, before the lockdown, during the lockdown and how you are evolving. We'd love for you to share from that space. Okay, certainly. And thank you both again so much for this privilege and this opportunity. And being in your energies <laughs> is amazing. And so I'm definitely looking for a high level dialogue to take place today. Um, so to answer your question, you know, we did have sort of some previous dialogue just in terms of some of the things that have been occurring and particularly in reference to what has happened and, and the lockdown. And what has been interesting for me because we each have been impacted and affected in many different ways. But prior several years ago, a lot of what most are coming into as being a new normal 
has actually been my normal for several, several years. And I believe that a lot of the preparation had to do with uh, being more in the awakened experience and just being in tune to time shifting and knowing how to best prepare and not necessarily prepare for like a crisis because not seeing something like this coming, but just understanding that we were going to be entering into a new era. And with entering into a new era, someone has to be able to pioneer that energy, pioneer that expression. So a lot of people were already sort of out of the head of all that has occurred. So particularly with entrepreneurs, uh, home-based business owners and healers, so to speak, who already had their practices going or had been building up uh, whatever their empire was meant to express in the marketplace. So when this occurrence happened, you had people who weren't losing jobs, so to speak, in terms of the traditional format. So that's one of the ways that people were already in position of already being at home. For me, particularly because I had been in business for years, that was already part of that norm. Uh, that, like I said, most people now are adapting to that as a new normal. Also, as it relates to my, my children, they were already on the homeschool path. So I wasn't impacted in terms of having to take children out of school. Now, I do have a, a college, a senior in college, uh, my son, and but the two years prior to him going into college, he had been online with his schooling. And so when the colleges shut down, he was able to make a very smooth transition to doing the online work because he had already been part of that experience before. So those are just a few ways that, and we can talk about a variety of different things, but I hope that sort of gives a, a brief introduction to how some of us were um, it. Yeah, most most certainly. And now I can see why the acronym for WOW, she does it all. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I love what you're saying because it resonates so much with who I have became over a span of time as well. Yeah. yeah. In, in how we have, you know, could see into the future as it were mm -hmm. and yeah. break through the norms of the, you know, of the normal. Mm -hmm. And to 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 do that so effortlessly when everyone else was just going through the normal routine mm -hmm. of life, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you you somebody you know you started very young, obviously, that you could see that and that you could then embrace it. It's all about embracing that, and you Absolutely. embraced it. Yes, you embraced it way before everyone else could see this coming. And I think also for myself, this is why I love chatting mm -hmm. with you and uh, we have so much in common in that way, um, is how we navigated through that in embracing yes. it because, we, you know, the paradigm was shifting already, mm -hmm. maybe 10, 12 years ago. And uh, somehow, you know, I see some people are saying they're sky jumping or skydiving. For mm -hmm. me, it was all about bungee jumping, you know, <laughs> yes. um, coming out of a work environment into business. I'm so, it's so heartening to see that at a very young age, you, you brought out the entrepreneurship, you know, in your kids. And I did the same with my child. So it mm. is so amazing listening to you, you know, it's like all the pieces are just putting in. And like we so in sync, this energy, um, it's so yes, beautiful. We are to, to, <laughs> yeah, and, and that your kids are so way ahead, whereas others may be struggling, you know, with online learning. Um, you already introduced, I think the paradigm shift happened for you way before most people. And that is for me, the most heartening thing about um, your sharing. It just touches my soul so deeply. And oh, I thank, thank you. you for that. That's so enlightening. It really is. And rather, I'm I'm really happy that you um, that you mentioned you know homeschooling and the fact that you foresaw some somehow the changes and everything. And um, you know I'm 
I, I wanted to ask you uh, mm -hmm. something in relates to this. Um, maybe it's a dumb question, maybe it's not, but I know sure, such a thing. <laughs> I'm sure that there are a lot of people questioning, although not putting it out uh, mm -hmm. to other people. But do you somehow believe that things will never be the, ch the same? after all this because i get the feeling that it will not What no and it, it's not meant to be actually this occurred so that the shift could take place and because there were not enough uh, i want to say consciousness because we all are consciousness but i'll just say individuals who were awake and aware to the changes and the progression that need to, needed to be expanding Yeah. I would say it, it needed to already have been occurring, but because people were not in tune to that, so now we have a situation that has now presented itself as a crisis, and, and also the way we shift our perspective about what is happening is not meant to go back to what was. This is about building the new and beginning to expand that. And it is difficult for people to make those adjustments and to start to adapt to this new normal. But chances are, because it's not going back, I mean, some aspects will return, but even when they return, it still will not be the same because there's now going to be this evolution because people are more awake, whether it's business owners, whether it's the, the government, Um, all involved that impact our world in making decisions do understand that they now have to reposition how they have been going about the way they set up these structures for society. Those structures are crumbling, be it political, be it religious uh, formats. There are parts of the old that can no longer be present with this new expansion. That's where individuals like myself and you and Rahila come in as the solution catalyst in this era in order to make sure that the expansion continues and that there isn't some fallback or drawback to uh, the old because actually the old has collapsed, but because people are not aware of this. And again, we've been in patterns and conditionings for so long, it does take some time But with what has occurred, this is a shock to the system of humanity, in a sense. And as that shock is taking place, what's happening is there are more people becoming awake and seeing the truth of these formats and structures uh, were not going to be sustainable. And that's for those who have gotten out ahead of certain things. Like I said, even myself, not knowing that there was going to be a, a pandemic to occur, but just really following uh, the impulses, if you will, of what's emerging. And so for me, that's been something to stay with. And I still presently stay with um, being grounded in the now, but also being very in tune to what's emerging without getting too far out in the future, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I love what you said. I love the word impulse, um, you know, It's so beautiful in the way you couch um, the entire conversation, if, you, if I may, in terms of the theme. It is exactly that. It's about awakening for, for humans to awaken to themselves in getting yeah, to know yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you know, you spoke about past conditioning, learned behavior, mm -hmm. uh, all the old norms are not working. Mm -hmm. So, based on the old norms, structures, cannot contain it anymore in that we cannot contain people you cannot control them so we got to allow for new consciousness for each mm -hmm. individual to come into um, their own power and yes. how we as leaders then uh, allow each person to unpack and liberate their human potential mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, i think that is where leadership is heading very and much so. the Yes, and here it's not about transference of skills as run of the mold skills that people can have and get on Google. <laughs> the skill sets are different. Yes, they are. Where we are coming 
Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about you in my conversation with you previously is the new skill set is about self-empowerment. It's about intuitive intelligence. It is yes, about collaborative intelligence. Mm-hmm. And if we can pave the way uh, in, in ta- you know, tapping, allowing individuals to tap into the innate potential, then each person will be their own best leader in the way you are allowing your kids at home to do that. And that is the future of leadership, um, you know, in where we go. That's so beautifully said. (laughs) You stated that uh, magnificently. Yeah, I'm just adding on to you and what you said because I'm like, wow, you know. And (laughs) and the other thing, Alicia, just listening to you, your, your energy and the fluidity. Yeah. Um, you know, the vibration is at that it's so amazing because I'm picking up energetically in mm-hmm. a podcast with you. Uh, and I feel your vibration because you and Radha and I are so in sync. Yes, that, we are. You know, and that with our slogan of shifting global consciousness, I see you playing a huge role here with us. Mm-hmm. And um, hence, we wanted to have this chat with you in sharing. And we'd love to embrace you more and more in bringing in your wisdom, uh, your talent, your intuitive intelligence in paving the way for humanity as well. It's truly amazing. And to, yes, and also to keep the energy pulsating where Mm. we're together in the collective consciousness, um, you know, Mm. amplify that energy, the vibrancy of, of the earth energy, of water energy, of the air energy. We are all of that, you know, in this human body, in our physicality. So it's absolutely fabulous, you know, listening to you. Oh, my word. This is so amazing. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Uh, I love you, ladies. You know, we all are so intertwined and divinely connected. And and something that you said that I wanted to actually sort of piggyback on a little uh, in terms of the expansion and the evolution of who we are. Uh, as human beings and where leadership is going in, in reference to that. So we have a unique set of encoding within us and that's you and I have conversations in terms of the re-engineering of our DNA. And just even yes. on a practical level, how people begin to reconstruct and reformat and re-engineer um, themselves and start to unlock that encoding is really about doing the inner work and and going within in terms of something as simple as journaling i love to do intentional journaling and that's why i've, I've published so many publications that are a lot of them are primarily in intentional journaling format is because we've been in an era of information overload and there's a book about any and everything and, and that's wonderful and it's great and i i support, of course, authors. I teach authors and I'm, you know, a high level writer, you know, as well. And I have to give a plug out for um, our gracious host and her magnificent book, (laughs) Um, Uh, you know, um, because that is one of the books that is most needed to me on the market at this time for true transformation. And I really believe that it's works like that, that actually can help people in their journaling process. So what I was mentioning earlier about information overload and how intentional journaling actually helps to start reconstructing and reformatting the DNA. Well, when people aren't inundated with so much of what someone is telling them they need to do in a lot of their story, if they have just a little bit of information that sort of ignites or evokes um, the greater awareness, then they can begin to start journaling about that and bringing out their own information. When they can have their own information before them, then they can start to make better uh, decisions in terms of how they move forward. It really taps them into their own unique individuality so that then when they are reading other materials, uh, whether it be books or what they learn in college or how we skill up, things on the internet, they'll be able to process that information that's going to be uniquely for them instead of taking on what everybody else is saying and then trying to live life from that place. 
that's just not going to work anymore. I just yeah. love that. I just love that. And I need to, I need to emphasize the fact that you are just brilliant by bringing up the fact that you encourage people to think for themselves. Because I've been trying to do this in the, in the last past years. And from what you just said, that's, that's my understanding, right? Mm -hmm. We need to all learn, you know, use our brains and yes. uh, learn to how to know our own selves and mm -hmm. create our own um, opinions about everything. Absolutely. To learn Absolutely. How to, separate, to separate everything, right? Absolutely. And the best way to learn about yourself, even outside of, again, experts or so saying, this is how you love yourself more. This is how you, you know, advance yourself more. Again, though the information and the advice is fine, but people are ingesting that in a way of this one size fits all. And that's just not how it works because we each have a unique encoding, as I mentioned earlier, unique set of DNA in order for that to be reformatted and reconstructed again and just on a practical level it has to be that we go within and learn what the truth is for us versus what an expert or authority is saying this is the way it has to be well that's a perspective and certainly there are aspects of that that can be integrated however mm -hmm. we got to know who we are and that's been like the the big elephant in the room that's been missing is that no one is really truly knowing who they are because even when we try to come from that place of knowing who we are, where did we get the foundational premise from that? It came from mm -hmm. some expert or some authority that's telling us this is the way to do it. But now that more people are waking up, they're finding that there's something unique about how I'm supposed to live my life and create from this place. And even if I'm not sure exactly what that is, they're at least they're on that journey of exploration and as they're on that journey of exploration then that's when the answers can start to come out and what they'll find is as they're journaling as they are writing these things down they get to witness their old brain and new brain um is coming forth then they're able to separate what is relevant for now and what needs to go um, and so that's just something, like I said, just on a practical level, how people can start to make uh, shifts. And then if there's deeper inner work that needs to take place, such as, of course, what our magnificent Rahila is uh, so gifted in, um, mm -hmm. then that's where the transition comes for people to now go deeper. But sometimes we can't take them so deep yet until they actually have start to uncover uh, a few things just on a practical level, if that makes sense. <laughs> it makes oh, absolutely. Sense. And, you know? And I can testify for that. I'm sorry for interrupting, Rahila, but I need to say this. No, no, please. Um, please I can testify ahead. for that for a fact because I've seen the change in myself. So mm. it, there's almost, uh, there are almost three years since I started writing everything mm -hmm. on a daily basis on a yeah. regular on regular basis it doesn't even mm -hmm. but i've noticed you know first of all the shift in thinking mm -hmm. i have discovered about myself um the way i i view the world right now yeah the values the real values that i can actually transfer to my children and hopefully mm. to other people around me so I'm mm -hmm. totally in, in, you know, in tune with what you just said about writing down and with, you know, learning about ourselves. And again, I need to thank Rahila, as you uh, also said, you know, uh, she's, she's in tremendously gifted. And also I need to thank to you because last year when we had our call, it was like, boom, you know, when oh, we <laughs> thank call, you. Yeah, that, that encouraged me hugely hugely you can't even imagine how much it oh wow well, thank you for yeah. sharing that i appreciate that very much i'm i'm humbled yes. and honored at the same time <laughs> ellie nicole you know i can vouch for that because when i was chatting to andra the last year and she said oh my god Rayla, you have to meet this lady you know and she was referring to <laughs> you <I'm> uh, <laughs> 
So coming back to, you know, I just want to add to what you both just said insofar as I love, I love that whole concept of intentional journaling because mm -hmm. when we are present to ourselves in doing the self-reflection, self-introspection, uh, self-reflection, self-investigation, it is so intentional because it is at mm -hmm. that point we can drop the story of whatever anyone else told us about anything. Right. Then we write down what it is we don't want. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, we start writing, what is it that I'm seeing? You know, it's the same with the lockdown, Ali, Nicole, and Andrada, mm -hmm. in that with the lockdown, we can prescribe to everyone how to be, what to do, get into this routine. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, rather than being prescriptive, I am advising my clients and kids, just be yourself. If you want to be online the whole day, go for it. Because you have so much time that eventually you will find your path and you will get the balance mm -hmm. right. Of what kind Absolutely. of life do you want? What is it that I want in life? And then you start scripting that in your journal. And mm -hmm. that is how manifestations happen. And I've seen it for myself because I teach this as well. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I want to mention to you is tonight, today is such a phenomenal day for Anradha and myself, Ali Nicole, in that today uh, we began uploading uh, 11 tracks of my first CD. Oh, wow. EQ, EQ plus SQ is greater than IQ, re-engineering the DNA for new humanity. Yes. Which Anrada is going to upload as in video mm. and audio of these teachings, of this conversation that we're having. So mm. humanity can benefit uh, from my experience in teaching mm -hmm. emotional, spiritual intelligence and exactly what you are talking about. It's all in these That tracks. is amazing. Wow. Congratulations, first of all. That's, that's wonderful. And it is extremely needed, especially during this time. So I know it was just divine guidance for you all to bring that forth for such a time as this and not even prior. You know, see how in sync that is with the whole of the evolutionary experience? You're bringing that to the world in such a, at such a time as this and it's more needed because prior, some who would listen to it may not be as in tune to it. And now that everything sure. is going on and now that this is being brought forth, people have ears to hear now because they want to know about this next level of how things could be for them and, and unlocking greater potential within them. I mean, we really are having a new human experience and that is the adaptation, if you will, that people are having to come up into that expansion. And as I mentioned before, a lot of people have been sort of ahead of the game and you all have been ahead of the game as well because when people come into these new teachings and these new understandings, remember they're new to them, but they're not new to the people who actually have been doing this for, for several years. And isn't that the great thing that there's been people who have gone ahead to be able to prepare this next level, this next dimension of what's going to be needed and required versus if everyone was in the same consciousness or the same level of thinking, we have things like this happen and no one knows what to do. But there are, those who actually do know what to do, even as they are navigating new normals for themselves as well. And I'll just share, you know, personally that even though it seemed for me to be ahead of the game, so to speak, but at the same time, it was also an opportunity for me to see where I also needed to take things to the next level as well. So it wasn't that, oh, this is happening and everybody's having this going on and it's just fine for me over here because I'm not having to make those types of adjustments. No, but it called forth for new adjustments to be made, new adaptations and also new creations to come forth for uh, this time. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. That fact. is so, you, you, you said that you expressed that so beautifully and this is why it's falling in alignment with our launch of all these tracks because when you spoke about intentional uh, journaling, it's one of the applications in one of my tracks. So it is nice, so appropriate. Nice. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. 
intentional journaling is where it's at because sometimes, you know, we need a, a topical focus. I know that the traditional format of journaling has been more of a diary based and sort of a purging and a brain dump in a sense. And, and those are still, uh, that form of practice is still great to use. But when you are being more intentional with an actual focus and an actual topic, it allows you to unpack and begin to see what what it is around a particular topic. And so that's why, as I mentioned before, some of my publications, most of them, you know, that are on Amazon are in that format where it is a specific topic for the book. And then the book will have introductions of how to best use the guide and then the journaling pages, whether they have questions and things that sort of evoke out of people what they need to um, start, um, yes, getting out of them what needs to come out. That's probably the best way to, to, to say that. Thank you so much, Ali Nicole, you know, for bringing in intentional journaling. And uh, might I bring in the topic of writing because um, that is common to both you and Anradha, you know. I know working very closely with Anradha and how she's written both the books in bringing out characters and using her characters to teach and empower humans to be better and coming into greater awareness. So, uh, and rather for you, coming from a, from a place of writing and, and looking at Ali Nicole, also being in media as well. So you have that in common. We do, we do. And um, what you just said just comes, you know, as, um, sort of a confirmation of what I said a bit earlier about the fact that I can testify for the power of the writing and journaling and everything. And um, due to your incredible teachings over the past uh, two years and so, um, you know, I've been, without me even being aware of it, I have been actually uh, putting in the information that I learned from you, mm. you know, in, in, in the two books that, that I wrote. And oh, wow. Nicole, by the way, I, I just want to publicly thank you right now for the incredible review that you have put in my second book, Seven Padlocks. Oh. I was just completely blown away about everything. And I just couldn't you know, my mind couldn't grasp the fact that you called my second book, which I have no idea how I wrote. I mean, it was <laughs> like, you know, I was just typing, but somebody else totally, you know, dictating the information, so to speak. But you called it, you know, a, a contemporary masterpiece. Now, Very how much so. <laughs> mind blowing, you know, mind blowing can that be for a writer, right? So mm. I'm just, you know, from a writer. It is a magnificent transformational, <laughs> I'll add that, yeah. uh, masterpiece. And it was an honor to write uh, the foreword for that because, as I even mentioned earlier, that that publication is one that is really needed. And the fact that it is told in the narrative format and metaphorically uh, speaking, bringing out characters, it makes it more adventurous and relatable for people to start to digest a new way of transforming their lives through story and and not story in, in terms of someone's biography and, and the journey that they went through but when you can bring what would be like a moving picture into a book and people can see that and feel that that within itself is very very transformational and so all of the things that I shared in reference to that publication, I think actually we would do the publication justice if you would speak a little bit about it in terms of, because people are hearing us talk about this wonderful publication. Of course, we want to direct them to go and get it for sure. I am promoting, yes, I am, you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think that it would be a really um, good segue right here to just, give them a little insight to that publication so they can kind of understand more of what we're talking about and then we can talk more about the the writing aspect and the benefits of how uh the intentional journaling that rahila was uh speaking about how we can talk more about that 
Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, I can go on and on about the book for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I will just um, I will just briefly go about it. Thank you um, for doing that, and um, mm -hmm. Ali Nicole. You know, um, I haven't actually spoken in this in this podcast about that book. Rakila and I spoke about <laughs> my first book. So yeah, it's it's pretty interesting that you brought it up. So just as a summary is um, Seven Padlocks, a story of self-discovery in the 19th century, that being the complete title of the, uh, of the publication, um, speaks about a, a girl that learns to put on some masks, masks from early ages, but then by, by the age of 15, she has had enough with everything. She just wants to live her life. She just wants to um, go out because uh, when she was younger, she met someone. She wanted to be a singer. Okay. So the girl named Queen, <laughs> interestingly enough, um, wanted to become one of the most prolific um, and most acknowledged singers in the world. So one day when she went to school, before she turned uh, 15, she met someone, uh, a, lady, uh, a lady named Allegra, who was one of the top uh, voices of the time. And um, that lady just stopped her and wanted to talk to her because she heard Queen um, singing on, the, on her way to school. And she just said that, Queen had this incredible voice and that she needs to work on it. But the girl was too afraid because she had a lot of problems, um, you know, at home and she wasn't allowed to speak about what was going on, although she wanted, you know, just to vent, mm -hmm. to, to speak to someone else. But then when, you know, years pass and years pass and um, by the age of 15, uh, 15 he just wants to leave everything behind. So she puts on a few um, acts of a show, so to speak, and she leaves home and she finally finds, she manages to find this lady, Allegra, and she almost begs her to, to receive her, to leave together so that she can learn everything from Allegra. Um, but then in the book, as pages are turned, Mm -hmm. Some of them um, get to, uh, let's say, a healer in our terms, mm -hmm. but then she was called a witch um, in the perspective of people of those times, and they start opening their minds and mm -hmm. uh, learn more about what it means to go within and to um, heal their issues and to you know, look for the signs around them and follow mm -hmm. the breadcrumbs, as we say, yes. the, the three yeah. of us. Mm -hmm. And um, in the end, you know, the book um, ends interestingly, but, <laughs> but um, it is, if I may call it like that, and I will call it like that, if the first book was my personal transition um, in, in the two years prior to writing this book, then mm -hmm. the second book was the overall transformation since I started to work with Rahila to learning about this world even more and learning about myself by writing, by journaling, mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. um, taking out of the the garbage that I had within, if I can call it like that, because I had a lot, like a lot. And I think that most of us do, but we're not even aware of that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, you said that perfectly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, but that is where the, the writing and the journaling and stories, just like what you're telling, help to bring forth out of people what, what they need because we've been seeing through faulty lenses and those lenses are actually a set of 
eyes, if you will, that have been given to us. But now people are like, I want my own vision, my own eyes to see my life and myself clearly and to be able to continuously define and redefine who I am at every exactly. stage of the journey, you know. So yes. being able to go within, again, which is, has been the big elephant in the room that most people uh, have avoided. And I, I don't necessarily think that people have avoided it completely intentionally. It's just that, that there's not been the uh, conditioning to be as intentional as what we're talking about. So now that people are having to learn these new normals and yes. also uncommon alternatives to be able to fully express their human potential um, because there's so much of who we are that's so untapped and that's why you know for me I show up as she you know read as, as a brand expression in uh, multiplicity in a multi-dimensional way because there's so many aspects of me that have to be expressed that have to be unleashed and how I was able to even uncover so much of who I am to be able to show up on so many different uh, dimensions is by going within and learning more about who I am. And then as I was doing that, I was able to then unlock more of my own encoding to be able to start expressing in this way. Uh, metaphorically, the journey is much like the caterpillar to the butterfly, except with the extreme intensity. Um, that we become a completely different entity of who we are. The systems and structures have taught people to just become bigger caterpillars and not yeah. actually go through the breakdown process of the cocoon or the chrysalis, if you will, and not having the human cocoon experience so that they can now become unformed in order to reform and re-emerge as a completely different entity of self. A caterpillar doesn't go through that experience and become a bigger caterpillar. Uh, it becomes a completely different transformed and evolved expression. And that's where we are in humanity. And that's what's needed to be expressed is the divinity of who we are. And when you are in that expression, then you're able to unleash into the world this untapped potential. And again, just from a practical standpoint, it does start with the, the writing and the, the getting things out. And for people who don't believe that they are actually writers, I mean, that's fine. But expressing yourself um, in that way to just write down goals and to start getting clear because lack of clarity a lot of times limits um, a lack of a bigger vision. It, it doesn't support, excuse me, uh, a bigger vision that can be expressed when there isn't the clarity. So the whole dynamics around intentional journaling is so that the clarity can start to expand as well. I know we're probably going down a rabbit hole here, um, <laughs> which is because it's such mm -hmm. a layered topic, but we're clear, but then there's a time where we have to expand that clarity. We have to get more clear about what it is we think that we're clear about so that we can define and redefine the next levels for ourselves so that we don't get caught in the human hamster wheel. We don't become creatures of, of routine and habit of thinking what has worked for me before and uh, is currently working now will always still be working. And that's why I mentioned even earlier on in the conversation that I'm someone that's very grounded in the present, very grounded in the now, but at the same time, my energy is also in the what's emerging. Because what's emerging is present as well, but in order to know that, you, you, you have to be focused in the now so that you can get what's next, which next is the new now anyway, the next now. <laughs> that's all the future is. <laughs> I love that. That is that is so beautiful you know um i like what you said about 2020 and the vision 2020 vision mm -hmm. yeah that's um fair. yeah 100 percent. and that is why you know i wanted to get both your perspectives on writing and how that brings about so much clarity in an individual mm -hmm. um in writing and also when we write in what we want so often um, you know, God and the universe or the infinite intelligence mm -hmm. 
allows that to manifest and we yes. don't see it because in our mind we want it to manifest in a particular way and we don't see the signs and mm -hmm. sometimes all these gifts come in unusual packaging mm -hmm. and that our goals are actually being materialized but because we only want to see it Mm -hmm. uh, from how we want to see it coming from our own, own rose tinted glasses mm -hmm. that we miss all the gifts. And I think this lockdown in whatever you and Anradha shared about writing is so profound because it's only when you write it down, it's such a good form of inner cleansing and venting yes, it is. as well. Mm -hmm. it and really it comes to life. Is. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So 100%, you know. Um, Alicia, might I ask you going forward in, you can say, 2020 vision or mm -hmm. uh, a better vision for yourself and your company and what you are doing, um, you know, how, how is that for you as well, you venture I, forth? Oh, the venture forth? Well, I'm definitely a new era expression and, and then helping others to, to unleash that. Because of the new shift, and when I say the new, just based on what has occurred, but things have already been in progression, like I said, for, you know, for so long. And my empire has been one that had prepared itself for the people, not just for ev avoiding some type of uh, um, disruption, so to speak, but preparing the platforms and the publications to be able to serve people during this time and moving forward. So it was almost like producing content and building a structure for the future um, that would then serve in this particular time in humanity's evolution to have all of the different areas covered, whether it be from health to wealth to education, self-love, I mean a variety of, of um, you know, topics that are the different, yes. yeah, mm -hmm, different wow. niches that it's, it's relevant pretty much to everything. And that's how I'm positioned in the world at large and in the marketplace to be able to provide that so that people have those solutions to um, the next level solutions to be able to support what it is that they are embarking on at this time. And you know, moving forward, it will continue to expand. I do have some things that you all will be seeing that will come forth in the media, uh, you know, fairly soon. And definitely when that starts to happen, I want to make some things exclusive for you all to have, a, we have another conversation about that. <laughs> so you'll oh. be the first to know about it. Um, but I don't know if I officially answered uh -huh. your question, but if you can ask, ask it again, oh, of maybe course. I can hit it at a different angle. <laughs> no, you, you absolutely answered it. You answered it so beautifully in repositioning where you're going. And I think, you know, the most uh, salient points where you're talking about health, you're talking about well-being, you're talking about education. And I think, you know, education is the way to go in how we educate our fellow yeah. human beings, mm -hmm. especially children. Uh, because they are the future leaders. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's, it's imperative that we, we look at it in every which way, including myself. Therefore, mm -hmm. if you see on my profile, it is, you know, advocate of leadership. It starts mm -hmm. with self, family, yes. business, education, and health. Like you, I'm also covering all aspects. Mm -hmm. of the human yeah, because it's a holistic experience. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we we pretty much we pretty much have to. I, I love what you said in terms of uh, really educating ourselves because when we educate ourselves and educate ourselves the right way, that's how we spark and trigger the right types of awareness. Because to make a few distinctions here is because there are several people who are educating themselves, but are they educating themselves to accurately prepare? for their now and their next. And I think that's been kind of the issue, if you will, is that people are educating themselves, but they are not educating themselves with the right um, materials or resources to become awake and aware. So, you know, good example is how do you know what you know? You know what you know because you've become awakened 
and your journey has then created momentum of enlightenment for that to be able to continue and then all of your years of what you've been through and your own education and personal uh, development brought you to a point where you could be this extensive healer in the world and transformative leader. And so you got the awareness of what was going to be needed in terms of shifting the DNA, in terms of how people were going to have to live their lives moving forward and how they could only do that within this new human experience. For those who are on the outside of that are like, what is that all about? But they start to understand that they become more awakened to what it is that they need to be doing and they stop continuing down the cycle and the rabbit hole of the traditional frameworks. And then they start to educate themselves or bring themselves in alignment, if you will, with the things that are going to make them more awake. 100%. Oh, you're just amazing in the way, you know, you answer that. Um, it's so beautiful and it, it is on point. So Thank yes, so focus on I think I think also why I'm focusing on education is because yes. I am an educationist at heart yes. as well. Mm -hmm. And in how we, we bring about knowledge and education to children. Mm. I believe yeah. children must learn in the most organic way and discover things for themselves. You know, sharing this I with Unrather, we are having yes. a chat. Mm -hmm. I think in our last podcast with Anradha and myself, we're having this chat. And one of the things I learned to do as an educator in the classroom was teach my learners how to think rather than what to think. And the yes. old norm was what to think. Beautiful. And that's why I find your sharing very intriguing mm -hmm. and very futuristic because it's in alignment with our thinking as well. And that's what mm -hmm. we are projecting uh with coming from born from love in shifting global mm -hmm. consciousness is shifting one person at a time yeah and that we yes. all have our own latent genius and it's up to us through self-responsibility to awaken mm -hmm. to that and i think your material and what anradha is writing about and i'm sure you know all your journals articles and books uh through your uh initiative will bring about that kind of paradigm shift in where we're going into coming to a place of unity consciousness mm, so i love yeah, that's I just the goal love everything. <laughs> yes and and it's so in alignment with our goal as well so we really appreciate your your sharing and your honesty and your truthfulness you know you are a lover of truth you are a seeker and um, this is why you're making such a huge impact on the planet right now oh, and we salute you. you for that we really truly well, I do appreciate salute that. You. I salute you all as well because you know it is that together we are doing it and standing in, as you mentioned, the unification, standing as one. And the more people identify with their unique individuality, their spiritual individuality, or just individu individuality in general, that is how we build more of that unity when each person is standing in the truth of who they are. We kind of have a, a, a broken uh, circuit, in, if you will, when people are still standing partially in what they're being told that they have to be versus now expressing the fullness of who they are. When we have whole people joining together, that continues to bring more wholeness. It continues to build that momentum of real, true authentic, uh, authenticity because that's what's needed. We, we don't need to keep regurgitating what was. We need people <laughs> showing up in the truth of who they are. And that's what it's really all about. And that's where you're going to get the best types of creations that come forth. That's where the purity of divinity really is expressed, is when people are expressing that uniqueness of who they are, and not just in a, a cliche type of way, express yourself, got it? No, truly expressing who you are, by first figuring out and knowing who you are without having all of the other constructs to define that. And that's where uh, we are now. And that's why it's really important to continue having conversations like uh, we're having and continue to do the work and us as leaders continue to skill up and level up and take what we do to the next level because 
we're always learning, we're always growing, we're always evolving, and we should be. If we are going to keep teaching and leading others, then we have to continue to be on that uh, path of mastery as well. For sure. Hundred percent. I totally sure. agree with everything you you know you you spoke about. And rather over to you. Ellen Nicole, I would like to bring that a bit even deeper into mm -hmm. um, you know, this concept of unity and this concept of shifting the paradigm. Because I would like to learn your opinion in regards to business when it comes to this aspect. Because, okay, we're talking about the personal mm -hmm. uh, development side for individuals. But then when it comes to business mm -hmm. um, and moving forward, how do you see that, um, you know, businesses need to adapt in order to remain or to evolve? from this point onwards. Oh, absolutely. And also as it relates to marketplaces, I you know, work a lot in that and am the creator of the new era marketplace. Uh, the paradigms that have been shifting, what I do know is that even with business owners and corporations, organizations, they too have to use those same foundational premises, which is something I do teach with intentional journaling for business and also teaching uh, business owners, how to actually hear the voice of their business and hear the voice yes. of their empires, because a lot of times there's a, a huge disconnect in terms of continuing to follow systems and structures. And even though they believe that they're innovating at a higher level, but I find that they're still innovating in a container. And if they don't expand that container and start going within to really hear what their operation is speaking and saying, then they can't evolve with, with the times, they can't evolve with the era, and therefore they're not producing the products or creating the services that are going to be in alignment with this next shift. And that's where you find that there are companies or there are businesses, uh, whether it be solo entrepreneurs, small businesses, or even brick and mortar, who some of them make some shifts, and then some of them don't and they have to shut down. So why is it that they shut down? It's because they were not in alignment with the progression of what was emerging. And so journaling, going back to that, but whether it's your business, whether it's marketing, whether it is your brand, see I journal on all those different levels. It's a, it's a lifestyle practice you know, for me and I have uh, a journaling practice for practically everything in my, <laughs> in my life, um, but, that's how you start to understand where your business is currently, where it's going, how to make the adjustments, how to not just adapt to conditions, but sometimes you need to disrupt. Like I'm a very disruptive energy. So um, you've probably seen that on my uh, profile on LinkedIn. I disrupt paradigms and, and disrupt the uh, current norms to bring in the new energy and the new expression of what is relevant not just for now but again what is emerging because what we do in the present time is what is creating uh the future but how do we create the future we don't want to keep creating what we already have so that's why it's important not to be expanding and evolving yourself in a container but sometimes we have to disrupt our own activity and get out of that current norm and if you know anything about me my branding and my empire is completely different. It's not um, even tied to any of the normal structures whatsoever. Obviously, it, from a media presence perspective, it does serve within those certain frameworks, but just in the operational uh, standpoint and how things are created, it's done completely off the grid and, and not from the traditional paradigm. And I believe that that is what, even what you're hearing from me and, and sharing, goes back to the, the journaling process is that how was I able to know these things that create the structures that I have? It is because there's been the years of that, that inner work, but the continuation. And that's how I was able to build the empire the way it is and then also teach others to start building uh, empires that are going to be in alignment with the new era. Because if they don't, then what's going to happen is as things continue to progress, they'll fall by the wayside. And it's very tragic to me to see a lot of business owners 
uh, their businesses don't make it into the next um, wave of evolution and the business is shut down, they don't have to. But the reason why they do is because they were not able to progress with the evolution. But now where we are bringing unification and understanding how it all ties in, it, it's all connected. And if business owners don't incorporate the personal and their personal development with their professional development, if they don't bring it into a cohesive structure with spirituality, nothing is going to stand at this point because the, the world has changed and vibrationally, this is a whole nother conversation, but vibrationally we're just on a whole nother grid. So <laughs> if, if people don't align with this new grid, business owners is bye bye lights out good night and that again that's unfortunate because it doesn't have to be but when there's been so much resistance in in the business world in the marketplace to make these shifts and transitions so often people overlook pioneers and because they're so caught up in which guru is saying this at this point and they're not understanding no disrespect don't don't get me wrong no disrespect to household names but they are not a part of the greater emergence and they are not as awakened to what most are who are obscured brands, if you will, are awakened to that's going to really shift and change the game. Because if they were, a lot of what has occurred would not have been occurring and people would have been better prepared. I know that was a mouthful, but <laughs> I don't think that's it. Only, you know, I can just say, wow. <laughs> she does it all <laughs> yeah and you keep and you keep on uh you know pushing us Ellen Nicole to just saying wow and wow and wow because oh. you know, what we bring to the table is completely different to any sort of conversation that we had before and mm. I'm sure that uh Rahila can also um you know yeah try yeah to yeah I I it right? totally resonates with every fiber of my being in transforming businesses because i'm also doing the same in mm -hmm. south africa with small businesses and some mm -hmm. large yeah um there has to be a readiness from the owner of the business um it has to filter through from top down bottom up Absolutely. approach mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i love the whole concept of when we're shifting to unity paradigm mm -hmm. is using the halo uh, organogram as compared to the hierarchy you know yes. the old uh, organogram mm -hmm. is the stepped up one so in teaching businesses in a new structure in a new way mm -hmm. as we let go of the old structure is to bring in the concentric circle so the owner is in the middle and then on the outer could be you know the ceos and managers yes. senior managers mm -hmm. And then it filters down through the company, right down to um, the person in the kitchen mm -hmm. or to somebody mm -hmm. that does the cleaning. But everyone is one and the same because exactly. there's a synergy. Right. Mm -hmm. There is a synergy and flow of love and compassion, irrespective of who you are. We are human first. What can I yes. do to help you today? Mm -hmm. How can I support you today? It's, it's right. the, what mm -hmm. I call yes. hashtag love, care, nurture approach that I'm taking into business mm -hmm. in making love the center of the business, in making Absolutely. love an opening from the heart center of heart business. Heart yes, shape the business. soul of who we are. Absolutely. Because that's yes. the depth of who we are. And if we don't have that type of heart infusion um, through our spirituality and, and not necessarily in a religious way, but just who we are as beings. And I believe that the reconnection has to come in the format of what you're talking about in terms of love being the base. And again, people don't really understand what that means. And so it is conversations like these and leaders such as yourself who bring forth what is this true expression of love? What this not just a cliche, but wh how do we really go about that? And it's only within these experiences that individuals first are transformed and then the businesses and the operations. And going back to something I said earlier is in terms of when people go within, even business owners for, for journaling and get the transformation that they need for themselves. This is how they begin to impact the rest of their um, 
organization or their operation. Each person doing their individual part and we all operating as one because we are cohesive. Like we're having this conversation, but we are operating as one unit, even though we're showing up in our unique individuality. So it's the same with, with businesses. Um, just any and everything at this point, because it's all tied together. We just have to be very present, very focused, and understand we are in new times. And new times calls for us to do some things different. I mean, it just, <laughs> we kind of can't get around that. And if we're going to be in unification, then we have to understand what true unity looks like at this point. So you are someone who has been demonstrating that through your leadership so magnificently. And then with Adretta doing all that she's doing with the flavored writing and also being a true authentic voice and expression because she's a unique brand and it's presences like this that are now going to become the overtakers versus uh, what has been because sometimes when it, there is obscurity and I say that there has been obscurity because if you aren't known enough where the masses are coming to you that means that the light is not illuminated enough just yet in order for the gravitation to be there but that time is now that that's starting to happen so that's why it's important that as you are continuing to put out what you're putting out it's making you more available and the vibration is bringing people to your presence to um, Rahila's presence to what we're doing because we have the messages of the hour that people actually need to be tuning into um, versus what they have consistently been inundated with. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Again, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you are getting me going here. <laughs> it's hard to turn that spigot off once the water starts flowing. Oh, you know. <laughs> you just leave us I'm spellbound. <laughs> I'm spellbound. <laughs> it's just your magic, you know? <laughs> Thank you for being with us um, today, Ellen Nicole. It's been a delightful conversation, and you brought so many things to the table. We just, you know, Rahila and I can't stop but saying wow and wow and wow because <laughs> you're absolutely incredible. Oh, thank and, you. Uh, we're really, really grateful that you accepted in the first place and for, you know, the three of us to be right here, right now in this uh, very formula, so to speak. And um, I would like to ask you if you would please like to leave the audience with something that you find at this point really important for people to think about. Absolutely. And again, thank you so very much for this opportunity. I have had a phenomenal time uh, being with you both and being able to share with your listening audience. So one of the things I think is most important at this point, and I talked about it in this segment, is really getting into your own individuality. And the best way to actually go about doing that, there's a little exercise that people can do. And so whether they close their eyes or just being aware and, and present is imagine yourself outside of everything you've ever known. So imagine yourself kind of outside of the planet. Imagine yourself outside of, again, structures, anything you've ever known and see yourself kind of as just a blank space, almost as if you're just breath even though you're in your body. <laughs> but when you spend time, and it doesn't take long, just being outside of everything that's known, this is where the new unknowns can begin to reveal to you about you and how you become more awake to your individuality. By having those moments of being in that blank space, a clear space when you return to your everyday life then you'll be able to start to be intentional more and you'll be able to utilize and leverage everything in your life in a very new way just by allowing yourself to be a blank slate outside of everything 
so again, you come back and integrate yourself into your everyday life and reality, you'll start to see a significant shift just by doing that alone. So that would be what I would love to leave the listening audience with today is your statement of individuality now begins to be redefined. And I look forward to how that unfolds for everyone. How beautiful that is. How beautiful that is. Thank you. Thank you both again. Thank it's you, Ellie amazing. Nicole. You know, as you were speaking, I was actually doing that guided visualization. Me too, me too. And it is, it is so powerful. And I can see why you have such an uh, illustrious oh. uh, multidimensional uh, <laughs> being of light. Uh, and just in this small activity that you put out brings out how we are multidimensional beings mm -hmm. having a human experience. Yes. I thank you from the depths of my heart and soul today for being with us and we look forward to having more chats with you absolutely thank you so much and have a fabulous weekend as well much love and blessings thank you both thank you